right, and welcome to uh, Musicians Mix here at the, the KGPR FM Studios. I have a, a very special guest in, in, in the house today, uh, a very authentic, original, and original cat I've just met here, Mr. Billy Breeze. Welcome, Billy. Hey, thank you. Good you to bet. be here. All right. Well, I, you, you have already kind of talked to us about how you've gotten into this outlaw country and how you've been kind of an outlaw all your life. Uh, when did you start writing songs? I started writing when I was a kid, you know, a long time ago when I was 20 or so. Folks told me I should do it, but really the last 11 years I got really Sure, into it. right. Always played guitar? Uh, no, I just started playing maybe eight years ago. I didn't think I could. I had an injury. I really started working about eight, ten years ago. Sure. You were talking about your uh, skiffle style yeah, guitar yeah. because you you got one finger that's kind of wonky. Yeah. But you still, I mean, it sounds good to me, Dad. Yeah. I don't know what you're doing right. but <laughs> I'm just working on it, working on it. Sure, sure. <laughs> just keep trying. Who were your earliest influences, do you remember? And, you know, I never heard any any outlaw country till I was probably 20, and then it was Waylon and Whitley. Those two guys sure. was, the, was the guys I heard that I really went nuts over. And then, uh, of course, David Allen Coe, I went with all of them after sure. that. But one of my big heroes was uh, Commander Cody and the Lost Planet Airmen. Oh, yeah. A lot of people haven't heard of them. but Oh, yeah, I, do. I have. We opened for them many, many years Did ago you? down yeah. in Cody, Wyoming. Awesome, awesome. Yeah, darn right. They were. Yeah. And Bill Kirchin, yeah. who yeah. was still stumbling around doing that hillbilly, you yeah. know, that hillbilly guitar twang. Billy Joe Shavers plays some good hillbilly stuff. I yeah, think. yeah. Those are my influencers. Sure, sure. The early, uh, the outlaw country yeah. that Waylon and Willie, were. we've been watching the Ken Burns thing, and, and uh, they had a big e- episode on... You know, the Lugenbach, Texas boys, when yeah. they all moved out of Nashville and went back out to Texas. Yeah. And that's where Outlaw kind of got it going. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. In sure. fact, Wayland's g- girlfriend had the first Outlaw name, Jesse Coulter. That's not her real name. She took it from a guy that robbed trains in her state called Jess Coulter. She was the <laughs> first Outlaw. Yeah. guess it took a woman to show him where to go. I guess, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah. nothing wrong with that. No, 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 no. Especially not as one as pretty as her. Yeah, yeah. She was quite a talent. Yeah. Still going, I guess. Oh, yeah, Things yeah. Things are going, so. Well, that's good. Uh, well, you just started playing. Uh, 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 you've got a show coming up. That's kind of more part of the reason we're getting you going. Uh, you're heading down to Helena, you were saying, to finish up some recording? Yeah, I'm going down to Helena for, to so far with Jake Ryan. going to do an a EP down there, and then... Uh, I got a gig at the Crown here, and then me and him are going on the road in uh, November. We got several things lined up. One is at the Crown, but when is the Crown coming up? The Crown's October twenty fifth for me. Okay, October twenty fifth. Okay, we'll put it on our calendars here and come on out to see you. All right, good. That'll be a good one. Well, uh, uh, I'm kind of interested. Where you hail from? I'm from Montana originally, right. all over, but I stayed in uh, Great Falls most of my life. I was in the joint for a while, so yeah, sure. been a long time there. But right. here's where I live That's most good. of my life That's in, good. in Great Falls. I like it here. Excellent. Yeah, it's a good town. It's kind of oh, a, yeah. We're kind of an undiscovered property, you know. It it's, is. There's which some is art okay. here that's unbelievable. Well, and we were always kind of the, considered the redheaded stepchild of Montana for a long time, and we probably still are in some circles, you know. But They told me that when I left Billings. You won't like it there. I loved it here. I yeah. stayed here. Yeah, <laughs> you bet. Nothing wrong with this town. No. <laughs> Darn right. Well, why don't you set us up on this first song that you've got going for All us? All right. What I did is I, uh, Willie Nelson got arrested back in 2010 or 2011, I guess. 2010, I guess it was, on Black Friday coming home from a concert for some weed down in Texas. So I wrote a little song about it called Willie's Lament, and that's what it is. All right. It's out there on the YouTube. That's right. So I, that's that's excellent. I mean, you've yeah. got it. I just saw the YouTube cut, and it, it looks great. Yeah, and we're selling it on Spotify and iTunes and all those places as well. Sure. Deezer, um, Amazon. It's all out there. So right. It's called Willie's Lament. It's a good little song about him. Okay. <laughs> all right. An Austin Torpedo. Yeah. Yeah, th- that's what he called him. <laughs> yeah, I, I suppose. Yeah, you know, fun, funny Mexican cigarettes. So. Yeah. When they well, first moved out there from Nashville, that's what that's what he really got impressed by the Austin scene out there. Oh, the yeah. College scene. So. Yeah, sure. You ever been down there? I have not. Down Texas way? I've been to Texas, but not in a pleasant situation. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, well, I, I think if you've ever been to Texas, for the most part, they're always unpleasant situations. They can be, yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> Well, that's great. That's great. Now, you're playing this Yamaha. That's a good-looking guitar. What? Tell us a little about that. Well, I buy these over at Rod's. I, I, they got me into Yamahas a long time ago, and mm-hmm. they're just they're built really good now. They used to be a little cheaper than some guitars. They still are monetarily, but they're built just as good as a lot of American guitars out of good, yeah. good wood. 
good solid wood, and they just age good. They have a good sound to them, so I'm right. kind of particular you on them. you got all the electronics on board and yeah. all the good stuff yeah. to go with. So, i got yeah. a good gut string one that has a double pickup on it so you can get those bottom strings to pick in, but mm -hmm. it, Yamaha's the only one I've found that made that double pickup for, really? the, yeah. for yeah. that gut string. Well, yeah, and gut strings, well, of course, Willie plays the most famous one yeah, of yeah, all, yeah, the yeah. little trigger there, you yeah. know, but, uh, you know, I, I, I've had friends actually take a grinder and put a hole in it to make them look, you know, like yeah, they, yeah. they've really been beaten and yeah. taken taken bad care of, rode, away, rode hard, put away wet. His, you know? his reason, he's not you're not supposed to use a pick with him, and he uses a pick with him, and that's why he's got it all chopped up, yeah, you know. Yeah. But it sounds great, and like you said, sure. he improvised and made a sound that nobody yeah. else could have, you know. Yeah. That's Willie. Well, let's talk about that songwriting. Now, how do you how do you come about that? How do you just the words obviously come first, huh? Not always, you know. Sometimes it comes with the music first. I wrote a song once about this girl asked a friend of mine what kind of music we write, and I didn't know, so I wrote a song called "Some Kind of Pop." I had the music two weeks before I had a word, but generally, yeah, the the music or the words come first, and it just. Sometimes it's just inspiration. I see a, see something and it makes me write a line. Sure. And other times I'm just really emotional. And then sometimes I set out to write a song like this one. I set out to write it because I felt like it needed to be talked about. Right, you know, it's right. kind of ridiculous to stop a 78-year-old musician and not expect him to have some weed on him, <laughs> yeah. you know, <laughs> yeah. especially when he's the vice president of the normal. You yeah, know? right. You know, so you I wrote a little song about it, but I set out to do that. It just depends on what what's going on. But my best songs, I think, are emotional. They just come naturally. Right, right, right. So that's where you come from, deep in the well there. You just yeah. drag it out from the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, sure. That's, a, that's probably as good a process as any, you know, and, and the chords just kind of fall into place. And, yeah. And, and sometimes, you know, I'll sit down with people. They have, I wrote a song with a girl. She had a verse and a chorus, and that's all she had. So I sat down with her. I wrote a second verse and a bridge. and. Mm -hmm. You know, we can. I write with other people too. Sure. It just depends on the inspiration. Yeah, a lot of collaboration going on these oh, yeah, days. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. you see that. In, I like with it. the big people. You know, keeps your mind open. Yeah, yeah. Why keeps not? Keeps you growing instead of stagnating. Yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. You betcha. So, uh, what is your uh, current schedule now? Are you? You're, you said you're heading down to tour, uh, Helena with the scratch tracks. and going to finish up a little down there. Working on an EP. Yeah, we're working on an EP. It'll be seven uh, songs on that EP. Mm -hmm. uh, one is Willie's Lament, and this right. next song we're going to play is going to be on there, too. And then the live song I'm going to do will be on there. Uh, it's six songs called Saddle Up. The, the title track's called Saddle Up, about a biker guy gets himself in trouble. It's a good song, I thought, for sure. a first EP. Right. And then we're going to, me and Jake are going to go start touring in November. He's setting some up. Uh, Anaconda and Helena, I don't know the exact places yet, but I will get that out on the web. Yeah. I will be at the Crown on the 29th with Jake in November, but right. I think we're going to tour through December. So you have a Facebook uh, page or any of that kind of I stuff? I got Instagram. Well, Instagram. Instagram. That seems yeah. to be the thing now. Yeah, Billy Breeze Instagram. Okay, well, yeah. we'll certainly look that up. Yeah. Well, that's good. That's good. Well, why don't you set us up on this next tune here, which we you got going to? Well, I was having trouble finding musicians around here, so I called James up and I told him, you know, why don't we just cut a piano track song like kind of like Fleetwood Mac did at the end of that second album, you sure. know. Um, Christine McVie went in and did Songbird All. She's just piano. I remember seeing him back yeah. in the day, and right. that's the last song she did in the concert and make you cry because everybody else left and she sang that song. Yeah, alone. oh, it was beautiful. Yeah, so I said, well, let's just do a keyboard track. We went down and we rented the room at Paris Gibson and rented their piano and cut this track called I Need You. It's a love song. Yeah. I don't write too many love songs, but I play the keys and sing this. It's called I Need You. Okay. Yeah, how about that, man? Wow. Thank you. Pretty pretty emotional there. Yeah, I wrote it when my friend was dying. I wrote a lot of emotional songs when he was dying. It was a hard eight months. But. Sure, sure. Uh, the piano, yeah, that that's you on piano. Yeah. And uh, and uh, just you always played piano, or just I I got my do re mi's when I was eight. That was about it. Maybe five lessons. Yeah. And then I've been playing about two years. I, I picked it up about two years ago, two and a half years ago. And Sounds great, man. Sounds okay, great. Okay, thank you. And so, but you play separate. It's like you say, kind of hard to sing and play at the same time. Yeah, unless I'm doing boogie woogie. For some reason, I can sing that boogie stuff and, and play it at the same time. <laughs> That's because I listened to so much of it. I guess sure. when I was young. You yeah, know? yeah, old time. Commander Cody and those guys. Oh yeah, yeah. The, there were some boogie woogie kings right oh, yeah, there. Yeah. They were a lot of fun. Oh, a yeah. Fun. That gets a person's leg jumping no matter what. Yeah. 
Yeah, they yeah. See, they hear that those bass notes on that piano yeah. and honky tonk. Yeah, their neck just starts going. There's nothing they can do. Kind of like the fiddle and the banjo exactly. when somebody drags those exactly. things out. You can't you can't sit in a seat. Nope, you cannot. <laughs> Got to jump on up and get to yeah. her. That's why you need one in every band. Yeah, yeah, you betcha. Well, we just had a guy last night playing mandolin for us and fiddle. Oh yeah, and uh, that was the effect. I yeah. mean, the minute they start sawing away on that old fiddle, yeah. people just up they go. Yeah. That's all she wrote. You know. Yeah, that's good. That's excellent. So. I was going to ask you too. Uh, now, when you go on the road, uh, do you, you just solo by yourself? Uh, do you have a band or sometimes? No band. Or? I go. I, I go. I play harmonica and guitar, mm-hmm. and then I'll switch off and play um, piano. You know, piano and organ sometimes at the same time. Sure. Uh, me and Jake will be probably doing some stuff together. Kind of break that show up a little bit. Yeah, we'll do. The, I'll do a little bit of my solo out. He'll do a little bit of his solo out, and mm-hmm. then we'll do a duo thing together. I've had several people. The crown lady wants us, you know, the, wants the duo part more than anything. She right, and they have an open together. mic there still, don't yeah, they? Yeah, they, they do. They, on they Wednesday just... night, Wednesday night at the crown, they have an open mic. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. a that's a good opportunity yeah. for any locals to get in there. Yeah, get down there and get. That's how I got out to meet people. Is you got to go out and meet people at that open mic. That's mm-hmm. that's where you meet other musicians, um, just friends. Yeah. You know, it's a good place to go. It, it's a good place to go check and see if, if you're if you're a writer. You want to hit an open mic to see what kind of action you get back because sure. I've gone down there. I just knew I had the song and didn't get nothing out of that crowd. <laughs> Nobody reacted. And then I go down with a song I didn't think was any good at all, and everybody loved it. You know? Well, we were talking about the joke song. Yeah. All of a sudden, a, a funny song you yeah. know, puts you over the top when, when you all your good stuff, you think you're good stuff. That piano song right there, you know, it's one of my favorites. And Yeah. You know, it, it'll do all right, but I guarantee you some of those silly songs will probably do better. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of funny like yeah, that. Yeah, huh? Strange what people like. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Well, tell us about this next tune you're going to play for us. We're going to play live here in the studio, and uh, you got your, your, your fantastic Yamaha. That is a good-looking girl. It's uh, a good guitar. And, and what, is, uh, what's, what's, uh, what led up to this one, right in this one? Well, all those guys, I would seem like a lot of those outlaw guys, but a lot of singers, period, are just dying off. Glenn Fry and all them guys are sure. just dying. I think it was after Merle Haggard died, I wrote this song called Where Have All the Outlaws Do- Gone? Because pretty quick, there won't be any more outlaw writers the way it's going. I mean, some of them kids try, but... Yeah, it's. I don't know now. if they've lived as hard as some of those old boys. I think that's part of the deal there, yeah. you know, yeah. that's, that you got to live that life to, yeah. to really write about it. Write what you know. Yeah. And so I wrote this song called Where Have All the Outlaws Gone because I was sad about Merle dying. You yeah, know? yeah, not good. No. So yeah. That's what it is. Well, all right, here's Billy Breeze. Are we ready? I said, where have all the outlaws gone? I heard they're on the head away. Well, maybe they're all out there trying to lie low and they'll come back again someday. Well, I sure hope they do because I miss them old songs. About hardship and loss, about how life goes all wrong. Yeah, it sure seems like they've all been gone for too long. Tell me, where have all the outlaws gone? I bet they all just gave up because the world changed so much and they couldn't run on. Like they used to Now you see some young kids They try to do Like they did But the music don't sound Like it's supposed to And I keep on Tuning in I keep on listening in For that old sound In some brand new songs But there ain't Nothing there No it's all wasted air Tell me where have all the outlaws gone? Oh, where did all those outlaws go? 
Well, I bet they're all gone for good Yeah, I'd round them all up I'd try to bring them all back If I only could Cause I still remember them sad old songs About heartbreak and tears How love goes all wrong It sure seems like they've all been gone for too long Tell me where have all the outlaws gone Tell me where have all the outlaws gone <laughs> oh. All right. Thank you. Well done, Dad. That was good. That was really good. Yeah, how long have you been writing songs now? I've been writing probably since I was 20 years old. Right. But just sporadically. 11 mm -hmm. years I've been really putting a lot into it. Sure. I've got sure, 150, sure. 200 songs. I'm yeah. sure I got 200. Well, that's the thing, too. If you can get them out there and, and you know, published and, and uh, sell a couple. I mean, you get yeah. some of that mailbox money going from some artist picking up one of your tunes. That's and, what I'm hoping for. Yeah, well, that, would, <laughs> that wouldn't hurt anything. You know, then, I can, then I can concentrate on making more happen. You know? Sure. Sure. I worked. I worked all summer, or all first six months of the year. I was making good dough, but I was working eighty hours a week doing it. Yeah. But I took that and put it into this, and that's what I'm doing. That's great. And to keep doing. Yeah. Hopefully, something will come of it. Well, continued success. I'm sure. You know, you keep going like this, it'll go. Yeah. You got to work. Yeah, you have. Like you say, you have to get out there. Yeah, you have yeah. to. Those open mic things are, yeah. are a real a beginning. You know, I have a daughter out in Portland doing oh, the yeah. same thing. She's a singer-songwriter, and then yeah. she hits a few of those, and, yeah. you know, it's a litmus test. You, oh, yeah. You, I remember the first one I went to, I was terrified. Yeah. I told him, get me up there now, or I'm leaving. <laughs> now you got hot trouble shutting me up now, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. No, you get used to it after a while. Sure. That's good for you, too. That's sure. That's a good thing. It's performing live is learning to do it. You bet. You yeah. bet. Darn right. Yeah, well, and you got your buddy here, Jim, shooting you here uh, live, yeah. so we'll get a little video out of the deal, too. Yeah. I was going to say, we, we were talking about that YouTube cut. Yeah. Um, uh, how else do you, uh, you were talking about this uh, uh, outfit, the English thing you've signed up with, they, they put you out on all the platforms. Oh, oh Distro Kid. Distro Kid. Distro Kid. It's a, it's a, it's a um, website where you go on and get your music distributed right and and published actually they publish it too sure for you. but you get it distributed through all the different major places itunes um spotify yeah. yahoo amazon all of them deezer in france there's 13 or 14 different sites they handle it for you they got a little bank thing there for you and you right. just have it they automatically deposit it into your bank account wow it's a lot like mailbox money only not as easy yeah, I not suppose. quite as easy. And they're probably taking a little bit off the top. They don't. They they no, take they a year. They take a yearly um, just a subscription fee from your subscription fee, and then you get your seventy cents or whatever it is from that sale. It wow. all goes to you. Oh, huh. well, yeah. that's something to look into. Yeah, yeah. That's just something we we're always interested in here on yep. the show. Is that, you know how do you market yourself? That's the best way to do it if you don't if you don't have the time to mess with all that yourself. And we don't. Yeah, you know where sure. I write constantly or record constantly or right, work right. constantly on music. I don't have the time to take care of all that. So they'll send you the published yep. uh, uh, works, too, as well. You yep. can probably get a copies of it. Oh, yeah, thing. yeah. It's all in there, yeah. It's copyrighted and published. As soon as they approve it in there, you get your little copyright thing and your publishing mm -hmm. thing right on there. Yep, it's all done for you. Wow. So, And it's a yearly fee. You have to pay a little extra if you want to do. Like, if you want to do covers on DistroKid, you have to pay extra because they have to get check with the artist to make sure that it's you know permissible, and they got to make sure the artist... You get paid. Well, that's the deal. I'm always wondering how to, how does how does that money get spread around? Yeah, they do it. They do it. They, if the distro kid says in there, if you're doing covers, they will not approve you for sale until they figure out who the artist is and whatever, so that the artist gets their shit share. Sure, the sure. I like I write songs sometimes with an extra verse or an extra bridge. That's a cover song from somebody else that I think ties it together. So, a distro kid will let you. Publish those songs, provided the artist says it's okay. Right. And then they take a third of that and give it to the artist. Well, that's yeah, how it works. They got to get their cut, too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You well, I, I mean? wouldn't want it any other way. No, I wouldn't well, even want to publish the song. Well, somebody was, right. somebody was doing your tune, you'd that's be the right. same, same that's deal right. all the way around. That's so. right. Exactly. That's right. interesting. That's yeah. good to know. I look into that possibly and yeah. see how she goes. Yeah, there's a little extra fee. It's only 12 bucks extra a year for them to check that, or maybe a song to check that. Sure. For your. Um, Cover songs. Well, this is a musician's mix here on KGPR uh, 
89.9. And we've been talking with Billy Breeze, who is, a, I think, an up-and-coming cat, man. I think keep your ear out for this fella. Check out his YouTube video. And uh, I'm Grant Stebbins, and we'll uh, see you somewhere down the road.